Hey, everybody. <laughs> I got my decent bet guys coming in. Thank, thanks. Got my support group. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Randy Hilarski. I'm one of the co-founders of 200 Social and Token Magic. You'll see, when you see the slides going around, you'll see 200 Social and Token Magic. Um, this is about my, what my wife and I have done and how we've lived on crypto, how we've changed our lives to be 100% crypto. And she, my wife can't be here right now. She was actually the one, supposed to be the one that was speaking because she's hotter than me, you know? <laughs> she looks a lot better than me, really. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we have a seven-week-old baby, and he's very fussy, and she doesn't want to be out of the house. So uh, we decided to let me speak instead. Ira was gracious enough to say, Randy, okay, you've been very supportive. We'll let you speak, okay? My wife, Annabelle, our hashtag Team Hilarski. Uh, we've been, let me go to the next how to build a life around crypto. The three things I'm gonna talk about are living life by Pareto's principle, the rise of Steemit and blockchain social, and the beginnings of token magic. Okay, what is Pareto's principle? Has anybody here, raise your hand if you ever heard of it, the 80-20 rule. Oh, really? Come on, guys, 80-20 rule. Yeah, Pareto's law, Pareto's principle. It, it says, states that for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. Pareto, he was a man, developed both concepts in the context of the distribution of income and wealth among the population. But I apply it to working for your success rather than wishing for it. So up in the, up in the top right there, he says, don't wish for it, work for it, right? How many people say they wake up every morning like, oh my God, I wish I could win the lottery? <laughs> Guess what? I worked for it and I won the lottery. <laughs> it's amazing. So our little backstory, we're going to talk about a little bit how we got started in crypto and what we've done. We started with zero. When my partners, I first came to Panama and Louis, Louis was part of the company that I worked with. My wife was, my partner Mike Brown. Some of you guys know Mike Brown. He now works with Panama Pacifico. When, when that year of my life ended in 2011, I no longer had an income. So I had to find a way to stay in Panama. So what I did is I had contacts in the gold and silver community and I started writing and I started blogging and I started making my personal brand grow. Now if you guys, who here knows what a personal brand is? Right? We all have a personal brand. Nike's a brand. But Randy Hilarski's a brand also. So, two years. We spent two freaking years working 12 to 16 hour days in our social media presence. This included Twitter, Facebook, most importantly, Google+. I know you guys probably think Google Plus is a garbage platform. No, it's the most important platform outside of a blockchain social media platform. Why do you guys think that Google Plus is so important? Why do you think I think that Google Plus is so important? Crickets, like usual, because Google owns it. Who is the largest search engine in the world? Google. So when I post something to uh, Google, uh, Google Plus, it immediately gets indexed. For years, people were saying to me, oh my God, Randy, how come every time I freaking go on the internet and I do a search about Panama, your name shows up? Why is every image I do a search, it's your images? Why is every time I want to find out about the cost of living in Panama, your video on YouTube shows up? It's because I use Google+. Plus. <laughs> now, networking. This is the one aspect that everyone always says, Randy, you're the networker. You're the one that puts everyone together. I don't know, maybe it's my personality. Maybe I'm like a Labrador retriever. I'm just friends with everybody. I don't make enemies. I don't make enemies online and I don't make enemies in life. If I have a problem with you, I tell you. If you don't like it, you walk away. That's your problem, not mine. So <laughs> that's just how we've lived our life online and offline. When someone asks me to do something, as long as I morally feel it's right and I like the project, I say yes. And I figure out how I'm gonna do it. So if anybody, <laughs> it's difficult sometimes because you're gonna have lots of people come to you and say, Randy, do this, do this, do this. I weigh it. If we have the time, we say yes. 
if I like the project, we say yes. I might either I'm going to find a way to do it for you, or I'm going to find the people that will do it for you. Perfect example is Decent Bed. All right? These guys had an amazing idea putting blockchain together with an online casino. I was like, holy crap. Jen and I are part of a private group that I started two years ago. There's only, I think, they're down to 37 people. But we're all whales in crypto. <laughs> and, and, and Decent Bet was born in that group. Jed came to me one night and he's like, Randy, could you help me do a transfer? Remember? It was a, it was a transfer of funds because he was working on the back end of the platform. I said, yeah. So a couple times we had to go back and forth to do this. It was a pain in the ass <laughs> having to do with the legacy banking system. But we figured it out. Uh, Jed ended up probably working on something else and it got it done. But I said yes. And then what happened? Decent Bed did an ICO. We launched that ICO. Very successful ICO. Raising, I don't know, initially it was about 15 million, right? Right around there. 53,000 Ethereum for that online casino. Networking, making friends, not making enemies, saying yes. It's all magical. In the early days, we did everything ourselves. I didn't ask for help. We didn't have the funds to hire a third party. Editing a video, guess what I had to do? I had to download the software, teach myself how to edit the video, then publish the video, and hope that people liked it, even though my editing <laughs> was horrible. Editing photos, my wife self-taught herself how to use PicMonkey. People are like, oh, you gotta use um, some professional editing software. We have used PicMonkey from the beginning. You can use it for free. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but it's a free software. Another one is Canva that my wife self-taught herself. And all those images that she's made tens of thousands of dollars doing, she did them using free software. We made our business our life. Everything that we do is about business. Every friend that we have has to do with our business. I know it sounds odd to the normal person. <laughs> but, not the crypto people. <laughs> the crypto people, we're an odd bunch. We are so passionate about what we do, we don't have time for anything else. But that's what my life has become, everything about crypto. Now, steam it! I fucking love this platform. <laughs> this platform was the step in our lives that took us to the next level. Prior to, right before this, is when I met Ira, and I met Jeff Berwick. I don't know if you guys know who Jeff Berwick is, the dollar vigilante, but Jeff is very well known. He's a crypto OG. He was the one who was telling everyone to buy Bitcoin when it was three bucks. Buy Bitcoin. He was telling everyone to buy Dash when it was seven bucks. So Jeff's made some good decisions <laughs> and helped a lot of people, maybe not in this room, but around the world, get very, very, very wealthy. So Jeff, I, I got on Steemit before Jeff did. I saw the possibilities. I logged in, set up my account. Not knowing what I was doing, I quickly lost my private key. So those of, you, those of us who know what crypto is and how it works, we have this thing called a private key. And that key is what gives you access to any of your platforms or for, for the Steam platform or for a decent bet. If you lose your private key, you can no longer get into your account. <laughs> so you gotta be very careful. There's things you have to do in crypto that are, that are next, a little bit more difficult than the average user. Like if you go on social media, you remember your password. Well, there's no such thing really as a password in crypto. We learn private keys. And your private key is 35 digits. It could be 16 words, a passphrase, lots of different things. But I quickly lost mine. So <laughs> I said, Screw this. I'm not using this platform. Three weeks later, my buddy Jeff gets on there. <laughs> Jeff made $15,000 on his first post. And I'm Jeff's social media guy. Jeff's like, Randy, did you see this? I, 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 dude, how did you do that? Because I signed up and I just wrote an article. But $15,000. I've been writing blogs on my blog for, for three years and I've made zero. I've been on Facebook since 2006, right after Zuckerberg screwed his partner. Made zero. 
how, how could this be? How could we have a social media platform where we can make that kind of money? He's like, just try it. So, I'll tell you what, before I tell you how much my first post was, because <laughs> it'll blow your mind, I'll tell you what Steemit is. Steemit is a blogging and social networking website on top of the Steam blockchain. It's another whole database, like Gould is a database, Bitcoin is a database, Ethereum, they're all different blockchains. Steam and Steam Dollars are the two currencies in the platform. Steam Dollars is just Steam pegged to the US dollar so that users can understand how much money they're earning. All right? You make this by posting. Your friends upvote you, your peers. You also make money by curating, which means you're not writing, you're just upvoting other people. And based on the amount of money that you have in your platform, you could earn more money. Now, <laughs> the cool part is you could also just be a commenter. Someone that goes on the platform and comments on articles, and you can make a living just being a commenter. So you don't have to be the guy like me who's a, crea a, co a content creator. You could be a commenter. You can go on and post memes all day as comments. All you take is the URL, the meme, you post it, and you say, great post, man, and some stupid meme, and you might make two bucks or three dollars for that meme. Multiply that times a hundred times a day. My first post earned me fifty-two hundred dollars. Now, not just $5,200. In the beginning of Steemit, we got paid out in 24 hours. Now it's seven days. But back then it was 24 hours. $5,200. At the time, Bitcoin was 500 bucks. So, I got paid, within 24 hours, 10 Bitcoin on my very first post. Now, I could take half of that off immediately, I'm not gonna go into how all the payment system works, but you get half off after seven days, half of your money out. I took that money and I put it to Bittrex and I bought cryptos I believe in. So you can imagine what those 10 Bitcoin did for me over the next two years. I wasn't earning money on social, but Steemit gave me that pathway. So what happened to my old accounts? What do you think I did with my old accounts? My old social media accounts then became the workhorse for my Steemit account. So what I did is I started taking all of my content that I was producing on Steemit and I was pushing it out across this network that I had built over the last five years. I have hundreds of thousands of followers. So I take that and I push it. Then the team from Steemit said, what the hell are you doing? How are you getting so many views to your content? In Steemit, we don't get paid for views. I'll just let you know that. You only get paid by your peers. But my, my, con my, my view counters were so high, the team would say, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm a social media manager. I've worked for a couple companies, and I happen to be the social media manager for Dollar Vigilante, Jeff Berwick. And they're like, well, tell us what you do. So I wrote them a curse-laced email because I have a potty mouth, and I'm, I'm a sailor, and I said to them, I will do your social media for you, but this is what I want you to do. This is the power that I want to help build your platform. And because I'm such an open source type of guy, and I believe in equality when it comes to the content, I said, I want to be able to share the content of the users on, Steemit, on the Steemit platform across social media, across all of your Steemit channels. Of course, at first, they were a little bit hesitant. But I did some magical tricks in the background. I had some RSS feeds. Anybody know what an RSS feed is? All right. So I always pick specific tags, travel, life, crypto. And those articles would automatically be sent out across all of the Twitter channels, Google+, Tumblr, Delicious, all of these social media channels you've never even heard of. And these indexes, these indexed, Articles would then point back to steemit.com. Quickly, we were a top 10,000 website because all these articles are pointing back. People didn't understand why, because people don't understand search engine optimization. But search engine optimization is the most important thing you could do for your content. You don't just write an article that you spent two hours writing and post it to Facebook. <laughs> what did you just do? No one's going to read your content unless you're famous. If you're not famous, you have to use the power of search engine optimization. That's getting your article with tons of indexed links. Those links point back to your article, and all of a sudden you're on the first page of Google when someone does a search. 
very powerful, and that's what I did. Then, when we were hired, everyone was so excited, we got to go to Steamfest. When we went over to Amsterdam, we spent a week in Amsterdam, got to know the team, taught them what we were doing. Some people thought it was unethical. I'm a pirate, guys. <laughs> I want my content seen. So I will do whatever I have to do for my clients and for me to get our content seen across the web. And that's why I believe in having backlinks all over the place. So we had a little bit of a struggle for the first year with Steemit, with the team. A lot of people disagreed with me, but I didn't care. We were doing so well that it didn't matter anymore. And then one day I got the email from their new marketing director. Oh, Randy, we're not going to work with you anymore. That's fine. I, was, I think we were only charging like two grand a month, 2,000 a month through their social media. It wasn't going to kill me, but we moved on. It was a difficult time with, with Steemit. We had flag wars. People can down, one thing, you can upvote people, but you can also downvote people. So if you don't like someone's content, and you have a couple million Steam on your account, and you want to make that article disappear from, this, from the feed, you could practically do it. You downvote someone, maybe it was $100, now all of a sudden it's 40 so it just went down the list. And so there was a big war for a little while. My, my, my client, Jeff Berwick, was one of the victims. They were just pounding on his articles and dropping them down the list. Well, persisted, persisted, the steam price tumbled. We went down to about seven cents each steam. Well, some of us understand crypto. We understand the power of Dan Larimer, the founder, the, the, the developer of Steemit, and the power of what he's done with BitShares and now EOS, I don't know if you guys know what EOS is, but he is the CTO, the developer of the EOS blockchain. I used to use the hashtag, in Dan I trust. So, within months, uh, first I, I had an interview with Jeff, and we were at the Trump, and Jeff said, what do you think is gonna happen with Steemit over the next year? I said, well, we have a new power down schedule. Instead of taking two years to take all your money off the platform, they do it in 13 weeks now. I said, all the people that hate Steemit, 10 months, it's only 10 months old, all the people that are hate it and they have millions of dollars in the platform are gonna take their money, they're gonna liquidate, and the price is gonna tank. After that 13 weeks is completed, the price is gonna start going up. So Jeff and I did that interview. That interview went all over the place. True to our, what Jeff and I said, the price went up, it went up, it went up. A lot of people got very wealthy. It paid off huge. So Anna and I, we took some of our profits, and admittedly, I sold some of mine too soon. I think we bought our T1, that's the Volkswagen T1. We bought that when the price was about 35 cents. I was already up 10x. <laughs> Take, well, one thing that we gotta learn on crypto is take profits. You don't ever have to, you don't have to say, oh, it's always gonna go higher, it's always gonna go higher. It's gonna bite you in the ass. So if you have nice profits, take some profits and use that money that you've earned. That article, I wrote an article for that, and that article made $450, just to let you know. Then, we go back to decent bet. And we made a transition in our lives. I needed to, 200 social was great. We did great, it was a year. We let one year with 200 social. And we, we did lots of projects. Arcade City, uh, Equibit. You probably don't know these projects because a lot of them are obscure. Uh, we worked at Tigo CTM and we did their social media. That's, that was what 200 social was doing. Then one day, our little group <laughs> that little Facebook group, one of the guys said to me, Randy, we want to launch a company that helps ICOs. I said, great. Sounds good. I'm in. I'm a yes guy. Yes, and then I find a way to do it. At the same time that that happened, this is August, the same time Decent Bet was getting ready to do their ICO. The whole team came to Panama. <laughs> They're all living in Coronado at the Coronado Bay Towers. You guys look, look like a bunch of homeless people in tents, but, but you're on the beach. And they put together this great launch of an ICO. 
And I was so impressed. I said, this is the best launch of an ICO I've ever seen. It was so different and so novel. They weren't using advertising. They, they weren't using PR. They were using influencers. They were using social media. They weren't going after the whales. They weren't looking after, what was the cap? 10,000? $10, $10,000 USD? The first day of the launch, they had a cap on their ICO. The maximum you could invest was $10,000. Some of us thought they were freaking nuts. You guys could raise $50 million tomorrow on the first day of the ICO, because that's how much pent up energy. After all of us influencers, because I was already on board by this time, all of us influencers have been talking about this for months, and these guys were in Vegas talking about it every day, doing live stream videos on Facebook, talking about how powerful Decent Bet's going to be. Yeah, they, they launched the slots, and there are these crypt the ones that are, you see out there, the crypto slots, they had that launched. People were getting so pumped up. The energy was so much that we knew that they could do 50 million the first day, or something around there. They chose to limit each investor to $10,000 USD. Now, people thought Jed was crazy. I thought he was crazy. I was I'm kind of thinking, okay, we should get as much money as we possibly can so we could run this thing for the next 10 years and never have to worry about having any income or bringing any money in. Well, Jed had, a, had a made a point. We need users on Decent Bet to play the games. We don't need people to have millions of DBET tokens who are just going to sit on there as a speculative investment. We need people that have 1,000 tokens that want to deposit their tokens on a platform, play the game, and get money flowing. After he explained that to me, I'm like, dude, <laughs> this is genius. So they did the ICO super successful. My buddy Wyan and Bill, we had a nice little talk while we were all here at Coronado Bay Towers. And they're like, let's launch this new company called Token Magic, where we do ICOs. We help ICOs. And we help bring them to the public using influence, using different PR methods. We get ICOs listed on ICO listing sites. We do we help you verify or go through your white paper to make sure people understand it and that there's no spelling errors. We translate your white paper. We help you find developers for your projects, which I help them find Adrian Scott. Adrian's not here. I'll have a talk with him later. <laughs> <laughs> so Adrian came on board and helped them with their project. So what we do is we, we help all these, maybe projects that don't have the money or the power to be well known in the crypto space, but they have a great product. Every week, our team, because there's, there's six partners, every week we get about 20 ICOs messaging us saying, oh shit, I see what you guys are doing. Can you help us publish, get out there and, and, and get our project known? You look at the white paper and you're like, eh, it's not really quality enough yet. You haven't, you haven't put forth enough work. You haven't thought about your economics of your coin enough yet. So it might take six months to prepare you in order to get to the point where you deserve to do an ICO. Because a lot of these ICOs today, I don't know if, who here even knows what an ICO is? Okay, about three quarters of you. So initial coin offering, uh, in the old world space we call them IPOs. These are ICOs for the regular people can invest in. You can invest 0.1 ETH. Today, 0.1 ETH is about, what, 90 bucks? So you can invest, as someone anywhere in the world can generally afford $90 to invest in a project that they believe in. So we take it a different approach. We recently did a, an ICO called CopyTrack. And CopyTrack was from Germany. I met them when I was in Lisbon at the second uh, Steam Fest. One of their gentlemen was was at Steamfest, and he's like, Randy, we need your help. We're German, and we don't know how to access the world market. I said, oh, actually, I, I'll, I'll be honest, my hot wife got him. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> it was Annabelle that, that talked to them. And I brought it home. We had a meeting, Philip and I. Philip, my partner, is uh, German. So, you know, they had that camaraderie going on that they, 
they really understood each other's cultures. So we launched the CopyTrack ICO. So it didn't go perfect. <laughs> the market itself was tanking at the time. January, uh, end of January, February, the, the, the crypto markets had a rough time. But in the end, we still had 21,000 participants in the ICO. Now, the average ICO buyer was 0.3 Ether. Now, people will look at that and they'll say, Randy, but we want to raise huge amounts. Uh, an ICO that only raised $11 million, th that's, not enough, that's not enough money. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Especially with a company like CopyTrack, who'd already been in business for seven years, who were just taking their, their project and putting it on the blockchain. All right, so that was very successful for them. And it, it worked out great for us. We ha just that one ICO, we have our, enough funds to operate our company for the next year. What we do, white paper consultation, token sales strategy, social media influence, uh, social media and influencer marketing, Solidity developers, we have a whole team, we have actually academy in India for Solidity developers that we started six months ago. We're on our third class right now. PR management, token listings on exchanges, and Bounty Army. We have an ICO launching, our own, called Bountify pretty soon. Watch for it, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna, we're gonna have a whole platform for bounties. Now, Annabelle and I live 100% off of our crypto earnings. I have zero clients that pay me in dollars anymore. 100% Bitcoin, Steam, Gould, all these tokens that we have, we can convert them to US dollars. Get working on it and the money will start flowing. The 80-20 rule states that 80% of people will fail. 20% of them will do the work. Now, you take that little 20% and apply that rule again. Then you take that 20% again, you apply it again. So the, the, the cream of the crop are the people up there, 5% or 1% of the population, who are willing to, willing to put in the work, who don't make excuses, who make it a habit and perform well. So when people say to me, Randy, how can I make a quarter million dollars on Steemit? I say, work every day, engage, be part of the community, comment, upvote, share your content all over, be that 20%. All right, you can do it. Fredo's principle. Thank you. All right.